Well, God bless you. This is Dennis Peacock, and uh, I wanted to share with you uh, some of the insight, some of the knowledge, some of the future that I see, and uh, continue to communicate with those that we work with around the world in ministry, especially in this incredible hour of crisis. Uh, I issued a statement, a written statement, uh, about where all this stuff is and where I see it going uh, some time back. But I wanted to have an opportunity to uh, share with you here in uh, a live video. Uh, ten years ago, I wrote a book called On the Destiny of Nations. And it was dealing with a crisis, which was the uh, foreseen crisis that we're now in. And I conned... Uh, a phrase, uh, the great reset, the great debate. And uh, folks, <laughs> this is the great reset that which a uh, number of us foresaw coming is now here. Now, it did not come in the way that I expected. I never thought a plague would be the way that uh, God challenged the entire world. And I say the entire world because the last time the entire world at the same time and all the nations on this planet were challenged was Noah's flood. Long ways back there. That's really where we are and that shows you how unusual this situation really is. The Great Reset. I want to read a paragraph here and then share a little more uh, freely. The next major signpost will be seen clear in the middle of April. Now, I wrote this two weeks ago. The middle of April. The virus will be peaking in multiple places and beginning to peak in others, both in the U.S. and beyond. The restart legislation, you know, we've just passed an unbelievable finance package, trillions of dollars which we could spend quite a long time talking about the implications of, uh, of that amount of money and what it usually does to a, an economy. But we will be on the edge of a second injection of capital, and I'll speak to that in a minute. The political divisions between us will have increased in the beginning of this crisis, uh, people were very civil. They're still mostly civil. But the longer it goes on, creates an atmosphere of anger and blame and greater political division. And when that sets in, things begin to fall apart. That's the last thing we want to see is the politicians, you know, playing the blame game while the rest of us are dealing with the consequences of their energy be, being spent uh, in places that are not helpful to the rest of us. The financial injection does challenge the global economy in a very, very serious way. I would imagine by June, by the end of May and June, uh, if there's going to be uh, physical violence Sure, most of you are aware, gun sales, all the rest of that stuff uh, has uh, spiked immediately by God's grace. Uh, we've not seen much happen uh, really in that area, and uh, may God keep it so. But uh, the nerves of the people, I'm sure by June, uh, are going to be wondering when do we go back to normal. And I want to say this right now. I don't think we're going back to normal. I think uh, we talked about a new normal in 2008 after the financial crisis of that. And in many ways, it didn't go back to the new normal. And in this situation, we need something like the Marshall Plan. George Marshall, who uh, genius uh, general, American Army general, who was a senior uh, military man in the United States in World War II, uh, 
uh, and came up with what was called the Marshall Plan to rebuild Europe. And we're going to need something that comprehensive. Uh, and you've got to have the right people who have the skill sets and the anointing to create that. So, I want to talk for a moment about the American psyche. You know, we've been famous for believing we could do anything. And the American psyche has been aggressive, full of faith, et cetera, et cetera. And I was on the phone. I've been on the phone a lot. Uh, even though we've been confined to our homes, I'm still communicating. And I had a, a thought, a vision, really, that I felt the Holy Spirit gave me of a man uh, waking up in a hospital bed. His arms are up. His, he's covered in uh, bandages, head bandages. He's been in a totally life-threatening accident. And he used to be really confident. He'd never been challenged in that way at all. And now he's asking the doctor, will I live? Will I walk again? All this uh, bandages and casts. How long will I be this way? Uh, what happened to the others in the accident? And I got a picture of that is now the new American psyche. America is no longer arrogantly confident that we can overwhelm and we can, we can succeed in any and all situations. This situation, folks, has made us blink. So that when we're talking about going back to the new normal, we don't have new normal people. We will not have normality in the exterior world until we have normality in the interior world. And folks, that's going to be a while. Our confidence has been shaken on deep, deep levels. Remember that. We're not the same people we were. Therefore, we will not go back to who we were. We're going to go forward with who we are now and as we work our way through it. The economic system is going to be in the great, it is already in the greatest danger we have ever seen it. Unemployment rates predicted to go the size 30%, maybe even higher. Beyond anything we experienced globally in the so-called Great Depression of the 1930s. We've never been here before. We're creating money at a level, at a rate that historically creates crashed economies and inflation. Uh, it's gonna take very special geniuses uh, and an enormous amount of cooperation. Uh, when we think about how much money has been injected here into the U.S. economy, folks, that's just the U.S. economy. What about all the other countries? What is our responsibility to be able to help them? Really, the two economic giants are China and the U.S., both operating from very different economic bases. If there ever was a challenge to basic economic truth and the laws of economics, it's now. And the battle between socialism and capitalism, although I don't uh, like to talk about capitalism because there's too many changes we really need to adjust. And that should, I hope, help some of you remind, be reminded that I wrote an article uh, called Choice-Based Economics because the battle between capitalism and socialism is, is going to be more fierce now than ever before. And that makes me all the more concerned with those trillions of inflated dollars out there. And we're talking about building a command-based economy rather than a market-driven economy uh, that's the end of freedom. Freedom is manifested in a market-driven choice based by the people, the choices of where they have faith and they want to invest rather than where they're told 
to have faith and told to invest. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about this a lot more. I'm going to be sharing with us, you know, much more frequently than I ever have before on this because of the nature of the crisis. I started a small business before I went into the ministry. Uh, Jan and I started a small business, uh, slept in the, in the business, not unusual, first year to be uh, overwhelmed. Restarting, picking up the pieces of a business is not gonna happen quickly. You can't just put your foot down on the gas and boom, the business is going. Again, momentum, loss can sometimes be virtually impossible to be recovered. So it's gonna take a lot of faith and a lot of energy and a lot of sacrifice. And all those things, I, I got faith that we've got a lot of people that have got that, but it's gonna take time. And I think at the end of the day, the thing that is gonna be most important for us is patience for the process and trust for the people. And I wanna conclude with that idea. We need to be really digging into the God-ordained relationships that God has given us now more than ever. It's got to become we can make it, not just I can make it. I cannot make it without the, the help and the relationship of those God has called me to walk with, and neither can you. Well, we will revisit this probably within the next month for sure. Uh, may the Holy Spirit guide you in your prayers. May you be clear on the things that you know God has called you to do. May you uh, ask for a deepening of character on every level that you can touch it because freedom is based on self-government. And if we ever needed a lesson in that, Self-government is the foundation of all freedom. And folks, we need now a nation who will turn not just for help, but a nation that will turn for internal character and internal strength. Well, God bless you. Uh, it is the great reset, which prompts the great debate. And we're here. And God help us now. Thank you very much. God bless you.